Ephesians 6. If you're there, can I get a yeah? Come on. Here we go. It says this. Be prepared. You're up against far more than you can handle on your own. Take all the help you can get. Every weapon that God has issued. Anybody willing to take, I mean, I'll take any help we can get. Come on, anybody, am I right? And he says, so that when it's all over, you'll sh be shouting and you'll still be on your feet. Can I get an amen on that? Amen. Truth, righteousness, peace, faith, and salvation. It's more than words. Got to learn to apply them. You'll need them throughout your life. God's word is an indispensable weapon. In the same way, prayer is essential. We're going into 21 days of prayer and fasting in August. How many know there's power in prayer? Come on, amen. Prayer is essential in this ongoing warfare. Pray hard. Pray long. Pray for your brothers and sisters, this family around you. Keep your eyes open. Keep each other's spirits up so that no one falls or drops out. Let me read two more scriptures to you to set up this message. Psalms 5 verse 3 says this, In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I lay my request before you, and I love this, and I wait in expectation. Come on, somebody shout expectation. Isaiah 10 verse 27, it says, In that day, somebody shout that day. Their burden your burden will be lifted, come on, from your shoulders. And the yoke from your neck, it will be broken. Be prepared. You're up against more than you can handle. But declare and believe with expectation that you got your God on your side. Because in that day, it will lift off and it will break off in your life. Come on, how many declare and believe we still serve a miracle working God who's the same yesterday, today, and forever? Can I get a good amen in the house? How many believe it? So here's the title of my message. I want you to write it down. It's a declaration of faith. And I'm praying today you leave here to where it just resonates your spirit and it become a declaration for your life and for your family. Here's the title of my message. Any day now. Come on, look your name and say, any day now. Any day now. Can I tell you right now? Any day now is going to be your day. I don't know what you're facing. I don't know what you're going through. But I know this. God knows every detail of your life. And let me tell you right now, any day now, you're going to have your breakthrough. Any day now, you're going to have your hope come back. Any day now, you're going to get your joy back. Come on, am I right? Any day now, your marriage is going to come back together. Any day now is going to be your day any day now. Y'all ready? <laughs> Let's go. Jesus, we love you. Holy Spirit, do what you do. Take over this service. Whatever story everybody walked in here with today, at every location and watching online, pray in Jesus' name we leave here today full of faith to know that the answer is already on the way. We give it to you, and Father, when two or more are gathered in your name, we go ahead and just declare, do it again, that the Houston Astros are going to win the World Series, Father, in Jesus' name. And the church shouted. Come on, put your hands together one more time if you're excited for God's word. <laughs> any day now. Any, any day now. When I think about this, I think about, you got to understand my life a little bit. Is, is that kind of live in three different worlds? And in those different worlds, God just speaks to me and uses moments to just speak to my faith and, and my walk with the Lord. And I live in multiple moments. One of those areas is the house of God. I love the house of God. I love being with all of you. Another lane of that is my passion and leadership through outreach. I love being in the streets of our city or really any street of any city. I love to go. I love to meet people on their worst day to remind them about the hope of Jesus. I absolutely love it. And the other world that I live in is I'm in prison a lot through the prison ministry. I'm like, I'm in all these different lanes, and I just love it. And in those, those areas of my life, God uses moments through people to speak to me. Well, one of those moments is what birthed this, this message. It's from a dear friend of mine who became like an older brother. His name is Pete. And Pete is my friend. 
Sadly, Pete has already passed on and he's dancing in heaven with all that. I can't wait to be with him again someday. But he taught me how to live a life of faith and declare and believe with the whole heart more than anybody I've ever been around. Now, I understand Pete's story. He didn't immediately wake up and was born with such strong faith. He had to learn and he had to grow in his faith with the Lord. Amen? Am I right? Anybody still growing in the house? Come on, just wave at me. Everybody else is lying. Okay, here we go. Here. <laughs> so, so my boy Pete, understand his story a little bit. He grew up uh, with pretty much every kind of brokenness that you can experience. Broken family, broken marriages, addictions all around. He was living in one household after the other. Like every, anything you can think of, he experienced pain from birth all the way up. When you experience those parts of the streets and those things, all of a sudden it turned into bad decisions. They created bad behaviors. And so my man Pete, he, got, he got, uh, became an addict. And through drugs and theft, all of a sudden in the state of Mississippi, they don't play with drugs and theft. They put my man, he got arrested, and they put my brother in prison, and he got a life, two life sentences plus 105 years. They want to make a statement, Pete, you ain't ever getting out, according to the world. And so my man Pete, he went to prison. And inside prison, he had an encounter with Jesus, got filled with the Holy Spirit, and his life was forever changed. He realized that he might be in prison, but prison don't have to be in him. Can I get an amen on all that? And so my man Pete, got, he got radically saved, and, and he had a dream one day. He had a vivid dream in his heart that God showed him that he is not supposed to stay in prison that much longer. But God had a purpose for him. And his purpose is he was going to go share his story and travel the nation and the world, preaching in prisons, churches, and conferences. He woke up from that dream, and he, like, he believed it so much in his heart that he is not going to die here in this place, in this prison. He started his faith begin to rise. And all of a sudden, he had a friend come up to him, and he said, hey, just asked him out of nowhere, said, hey, Pete, hey, you think you're going to ever get out someday? And without hesitation, Pete found himself saying immediately, yeah, any day now. Any day now is going to be my day. And that, that, that statement just resonated with his spirit. And can I tell you, when Pete was telling me that same story, it just hit my spirit of like, yeah, any day now is going to be my day. And I saw my brother Pete Multiple occasion, year after year, season after season, day after day, whenever somebody asked him about his future, his response, he gave no explanation other than any day now is going to be my day. Then he would go to the court, come up with a parole, and the judge would tell him, Pete, as long as you, I'm the, I'm the head of this courtroom, you will never see the light of day. And I'll never forget asking Pete, and I'll say, hey, Pete, like, like, when you heard that and you got two life sentences, bro, how did you keep believing? He said, well, Brandon, it was real simple. He said, in the Bible that I read, God said he changed the heart of a pharaoh and he changed the heart of a king. Who's to stop me from believing God can't change the heart of a judge? He said, any day now is going to be my day. And I'm like, yo, I can lock my faith with that. Any day now is going to be my day. And can I tell you, my friend, my boy Pete, for 17 years, every day he declared, any day now is going to be my day. He woke up. At night, he said, any day now. Even when he got rejected for parole, he still got full of faith. He had a sad moment, but he immediately stepped back. Today apparently ain't that day, but I know my God spoke to me, and I know my God is a good God. He is a good father. He's not somebody that makes promises and doesn't keep those. Any day now is going to be my day. And 17 years later, the story goes where Pete walked into the courtroom, and the same judge that told him he would never see the light of day that judge said, Mr. Pete, she was like squirming up there. She's like, I don't know why, but I was up all night long. And your file was on my day. I had a hundred other files right there. I don't know what it was. I couldn't stop thinking about you. I couldn't stop thinking about your case. And I can't believe I'm about to say the very opposite of what I told you, that you would never see the light of day. But there's something telling me that I'm supposed to give you your freedom back today, 17 years later. And my boy Pete walked out a free man. 17 years later. Come on, are you with me? And I'll never forget 
That dude rolled up into my house. He jumped in my house. He goes, Bing, any day now is today. I'm like, let's go. And I just believe it. And his story just anchored my faith because God is not a respecter of a person. And I saw him apply this to his life. I believe the God. He said, hey, I know there's a godly woman for me out there. I said, man, Pete, how's that date in life going? He goes, any day now, she coming, baby. <laughs> and God brought her an amazing godly woman in his life, a wife who's incredible. Then he believed God for the restoration with his son. And any day now, God is going to bring the restoration. And God did that. I saw my brother believe and declare for the miracle of God to work in his life. And the rest of his days, he did exactly what God spoke to him. He traveled the nation and the world, preaching to prisons and churches and conferences. And he populated heaven and he plundered hell. Come on, somebody. You know, I want this statement to resonate with you because if God can do it for him, who's to say God can't do it for you? If God, if you're believing God for a miracle, the world said it'll never happen. But God said, hey, I will open doors that no man can shut. I will make a way that nobody believes can make a way. My thoughts are higher and my ways are greater. If you lock your faith with me, any day now can be your day. Somebody shout any day now. Do you believe it? When I think about my brother Pete, though, I think about how 17 years, 17 years my friend declared in faith that, God, you're going to bring the miracle that I'm believing for. But how many know that the moment, the faith that he had on the inside of him, it came from daily decisions to believe in that faith? And I think many times, in fact, if you want to take notes, I'm talking about the strength of faith in our life today, is that faith, all it takes is just one decision. All it takes is one decision. In fact, if you want to take notes, write this down, because decisions and behaviors work together. Here we are many times, we're waiting on God because the scripture that we read says, hey, truth, righteousness, peace, faith, and salvation. It's more than words. It's more than just coming to church and throwing your hands up and thinking, man, all is good on Sunday morning. Like, we see you at your best, but everybody else sees who you really are Monday through Saturday. Y'all still love me? Come on. Anyway. He says, it's more than just words. You got you to apply it. And then Isaiah says, hey, if you're obedient and you're willing, you will see the good of this land on earth as it is in heaven. Because many times I believe that we're waiting, and we will believe that. There's nothing wrong with that. We're going to declare and believe that a supernatural healing in any day moment is going to happen for you. Do you believe that? Yeah. Awesome. Seven people. Do you believe that God can do that for you? Come on, do you believe? All right. But I also believe sometimes we're waiting on God so long to do a miracle, to take one move. God is saying, I've been waiting on you to take one step of move. Because you're, the healing that you're looking for is tied up in your decisions and in your behaviors. And how you believe in God, any day now I'm going to get there. But it starts right here. For 17 years, and every day that I knew him, every day I heard my brother Pete say, I'm believing for something, and any day now, it was a motto for him. It wasn't a cool statement. It was a lifestyle. Let me show you, it literally can create and trigger like a domino effect of blessing in your life where you make one good decision and it creates a generational blessing of whatever it is you're believing for. Let me, let me give you some practical things. How many, how many parents are in the room? Come on, wave your hand at me. Come on, got any parents? Okay, so you got parents. You know this if you've had kids. Someday you'll have kids, those of you who haven't, and you'll get this, so, so please lean in. Because here we are, we have a dream and a purpose for our kids, amen? God has that. We're believing God that God's going to, any day now, God is going to get them there. But when they get home, you got one step to take. When you bring them home from the hospital, you got to make sure you feed them. And then you got to make sure they know their nights and their, and their days. Come on, am I right? Come on, any parents been there? Come on, it's been confused, right? Like, you got to make sure they know how to sleep. 
Let me tell you right now, me as my wife and I ain't no kid of ours slept in our bed. Come on, somebody. Come on, even like. We let know that is, that is our area. It is, that is our room. You wouldn't be here without that room. So respect it. <laughs> respect that. Come on, am I talking to anybody? Come on, am I right? right? <laughs> so I want you to catch this. You make one step to say, hey, I'm going to value sleep my children's life. When they learn how to sleep right, guess what? They wake up with a sound mind. And when they wake up with a sound mind, then all of a sudden, boom, they go to school with a clear head. And then when they go to school with a clear head because they got structure and they got values and they got good behaviors in your life, guess what? They go to school and they make good grades. And when they make good grades, guess what? They're going to graduate. And all of a sudden, they get an education. Come on, somebody, right? And then all of a sudden, and then all of a sudden they go to college. And then they get their degree. And then they get a J-O-B and they move out and we got some empty nesters. Come on, I got an empty nest in the house, right? Like, get up out of my house. All right, so but, but all of a sudden you see them running and thriving and everything that you believe that they could do. But 23 years down the road, all happened because you made one decision today to create a domino effect of decisions and healthy behaviors. Any day now, they're going to get there. Same when it comes to families. I believe that families should make it a priority for bring your kids and your family to church. I'm pretty passionate about this. It's amazing. We value school, and we don't even think for a second to not put them in school. But yet, school lasts for 13 years. Church, family, and Jesus lasts for a lifetime. I don't know about you, but for me in my house, we're going to be in the local church. And I want my kids thriving and loving Jesus. And I want them marrying godly men and women. And I want them in Jesus' name. They're going to do everything they do. But any day now, they're going to get there. But it all starts with today. I'm making a decision as parents. that I'm going to make sure I get my kids in church. And they're learning the name of Jesus in kids' ministry. And then guess what? Then they fall in love with church, and they go to youth group. And when they go to youth group, guess what? They find friends and community. Are y'all following me? And they find friends and community. Oh, guess what? They're going to get saved. And then they want to get baptized. Come on. And then they want to say, hey, I want to commit my life to purity. I want to save myself from marriage. And then all of a sudden, boom. Then they say they find their purpose, and they find their calling. And then the next step, they find the one that God called them to be. They get married, and then they have kids. And then all of a sudden, they start coming to church, and now you come to church with your grandbabies. And you get to feed them whatever you want to. <laughs> then all of a sudden, but you will get here without making a decision all the way right here. Are y'all following me? Because any day now, they're going to be grown. How many parents say, man, time just flies too quick? I don't want to get there and wish I had. But I'm going to make a decision of faith today that any day now, my children are going to run with purpose, with Jesus as the center of their life. We're going to be committed to the house of God. We're going to be committed to the things of God. We're going to do everything we can because I know any day now, God's going to move. He's going to move in an incredible way. My wife and I see this happen all throughout our life. That's why we committed even to, with our giving, with our finances. We learned that we've been married 18 years. Come on, somebody. Let's go. We got four kids. Got four kids, not because I love kids. I got four kids because I love my wife. Come on, somebody. All right, like, and I love my kids. Just some days, I don't. And so anyways, but my wife and I realized 18 years ago, we learned that the number one stress on people's lives and on marriages is money. It's the leading cause for divorce. So we realized if the enemy is using that, to separate us, that is the one thing that we are going to immediately put in God's hands. So from day one, we have been faithful in tithing. We are not going to not put that in God's hands to where it's going to separate us. God, this is not my money, that is his money. And that one step 18 years ago of being faithful tithers, we are literally walking in the homes and miracles and things debt-free and seeing the favor of God move in our life 18 years later because we're faithful with the one decision. Come on, are you with me? 
Like, we, be- we would wake up and say, any day now, somebody's going to pay off our car. Any day now, finances are going to happen. Any day now, we're going to get into the house we believe God for. And we believe God was going to do it. But we took daily decisions of being faithful to the Lord. Y'all still love me? Come on. Y'all, I, I. Same with the relationships. You believe in God that the right man's on the way. You believe in God that the right woman's on. Somebody in the back just went, Woo! Yeah, it's like, we agree in faith. Any day now, come on. Here we go, any day now. Woo! That's it. And we got a relationship series coming up in September. Brought all your friends. We'll have a single gathering out there by the, by the foyer. You believe in God for the right one in your life, but hear me, friends. Here, listen in. You, you don't want to be the wrong one when you meet the right one. Because any day now, you're going to turn the corner. And they're going to be right there, and God brought them your way. But you don't want to be the wrong one when you meet the right one. So what are you doing today to make the decision to say, I'm going to live a life of holiness. I'm going to live a life of purity. I'm going to give my life centered on Jesus. I'm not going to live together. I'm going to make the right things, the right decisions, because any day now, God is going to bring the miracle that I've been believing God for. Same for your marriages. You believe in God for a breakthrough. Believe in God for restoration. You know what? Maybe it takes one decision today to let humility fall and pride go and to say, hey, today I'm going to choose to text them and tell them I love them whether I want to or not. Tomorrow I'm going to choose to serve them. And then one step of faith at a time, any day now is going to be your day and you're going to wake up one day and there's going to be breakthrough in your marriage. There's going to be breakthrough in your relationships and you can't help but see God's goodness in your life because decisions and behaviors work together. But any day now is going to be your day. Come on, are you with me? Amen. It's simple. Make healthy, practical decisions. Second thought is this, when it talks about faith, you got to understand this, is that faith moves from glory to glory. There's always a story before the glory. There's always going to be something you walk through, something you go through. Second Corinthians talks about how we are changed into the image of God, and we move from glory to glory. Can I tell you, friends, the pain that you're going through, God's intention is not to leave you in that pain. God's intention is saying, hey, you might be going through pain, but you're not going to come out of this worse. You're going to come out of this stronger. He goes from glory to glory and from greater to greater. That's why I don't lose my faith when I declare and I say, hey, any day now is going to be my day. I might be in the middle of pain. I may not understand it, but I know this. I'm not going backwards. My worst day is still a good day because I got Jesus in the middle of it, right? And he moves from glory to glory. He moves from greater to to greater, there's, there's even a statement that kind of goes around, maybe you've heard it before, that God will never give you more than you can handle. I don't see that anywhere in the Bible. I can prove it. Do I got any parents in the house? Come on, anybody? Like, come on. Anybody have more than one kid? Where you at? Anybody got more than one kid? Anybody walking around, people ask you all the time, like, how are you handling that? I don't know. How are you, how are you making it today? I have no idea. I don't got a game plan. I don't have a formula. It's just amazing. We got the church saved today. Come on, anybody like, anybody, anybody else getting fights going to church? Like you screaming at your kids at home. Come on, we got to go to church. We got to go tell people about Jesus. Get up in that car. I don't care if you got a rain boot and a flip flop. Get in the car. We going to church. Ah, walk in. Hey, too blessed to be stressed. Praise God. How you doing? Glory. Glory. Hallelujah. Am I right? Come on, am I talking to anybody? Yeah. Because sometimes kids are crazy. Got to remind them all the time. Don't forget, we brought you in a weekend. We can take you out. God never said, God never said that he will give you more, that he will never give you more than you can handle. Can I tell you right now? He will absolutely give you more than you can handle. Because if you didn't have more than you can handle, then you wouldn't need a savior. There wouldn't be a purpose of faith. 
there would be no reason for me to preach this message to remind you and let you know you can leave here today that even though the odds are stacked against you, you still got the favor of God in your life and any day now is going to be your day and you're going to see the miracle working God and the answer you're looking for. Absolutely, he's going to give you more than you can handle. And can I tell you something real quick that I think is going to help you a ton that helped me? We live in a broken world with broken people. There's just some things in life, it just goes into the sad folder. I don't know why it happens. I don't understand it. I think someday I might, but if God doesn't give me understanding on this earth, I know he'll give me understanding in heaven. There's just some things that go in the sad folder. I don't get why people act that way. Anybody know somebody that acts stupid? I didn't say look at them. Got people looking at each other. It's all right, Hope City, we're a church of transparency. <laughs> Are you with me, guys? God moves from glory to glory. Some things are, some things are in a sad folder. You got a decision to make. Am I going to lose my faith in my God? Or I'm going to believe no matter what I'm going through, it might be pain that I never thought I'd experience. My God is anchored in him. My faith is in him. Because he's a God that moves from glory to glory and from greater to greater. And that's why I declare that any day now is going to be my day. Because I know sooner or later, my turnaround is on the way. Come on, are you with me? God does it. He does it. Here's something you got to understand. When When you declare and you say any day now, what you're declaring is, here's what faith does. Faith brings favor. But can I tell you, favor is for you. Somebody shout favor. Is for me. Isaiah 56 verse 2 says this. Don't let anyone tell you you're second class and don't belong. You walk in favor. Favor isn't about what you do. Favor is about who you are. And let me tell you right now, when I declare, we literally walk in a life of faith. It's believing in Jesus' name that I walk in favor because you are a son of God. You are a daughter of the king. And if you're on his team and you in his family, he will open up doors that no man can open and make ways that it makes no... You have favor on your life. That's why every morning my wife and I get up and we say, yo, the things we're believing for, any day now is going to be our day. The Bible says you can pray and send down ministering angels to go and put your need on the hearts of other people to come and help be an answer for you. You walk in favor. You need to believe God in Jesus' name. Hey, I don't know how it's going to happen, but Jesus' name, I'm going to get a phone call. I'm going to get a text. I'm going to be turning the corner, and the favor of God is already on the way in my life. I can sit here for the next two hours and share story after story after story about being a faithful follower of Jesus and seeing the favor of God in our life. That's why my faith isn't shaken. Because I know God's got a way, and he's making it happen. I remember, I'll never forget that it's during Hurricane Harvey. My heart was just going out to every single, uh, every single principal and school in the Fifth Ward and East End area. And I was in there walking the streets. I'm like, God, I just can't get it out of my heart. I'm like, God, we got we to gotta take care of all the families. We got to feed them. We got to take care of their houses. We, we got to need. I'm like, Gee, I know this is a bold prayer, God, but I, but I need, in Jesus' name, find favor. I need the right relationship. And all of a sudden, I found myself walking in the streets, uh, serving that day during Hurricane Harvey. And I was walking with about five or six other people. After about walking together about 15 minutes, we began to ask each other, hey, what each other does? I'm like, hey, I'm a pastor. And then I said, what do you do? And this lady, uh, she says, hey, I'm actually, I'm a principal in the area. I said, you are? And she said, I said, hey, do you happen to know all the other principals by chance? She said, yeah, I lead a group text with 21 other schools and principals in the area. I said, can you text them? Because we want to take care of all their babies. We want to take care of the family. And in just one text, God opened up the door of favor to all the schools in the area through HISD. And it turned out that one of the board members, we actually ministered to her father in prison. Come on, somebody. Like... Come on, tell me the favor of God isn't working in your life. And through that, it opened up so many ways on how we serve and how we reach our community. Because favor is for you. The favor of God is on your life. We've seen the favor of God do multiple things in our life. We've seen the favor of God. My wife and I, the Lord said, hey, I want you to empty out your savings account and give it. I said, devil, no. 
I said, I know I've heard from the Lord, but this ain't you. I don't recognize that voice. <laughs> but I remember we did it, not knowing that two weeks later I was going to get that Holy Ghost handshake. If you don't know what that Holy Ghost handshake is, that's a handshake with a little bit of money in the palm. Come on, somebody. And two families the next week came and blessed my wife and I with double the amount of what we gave because we believe in Jesus' name, we walk in favor. Well, are you with me? I believe God, because I believe because we're faithful in our giving and listening into the voice of the Lord. Even, even silly things, like silly things of favor. I'll never forget, it took my family, we went to uh, Universal Studios, and all of a sudden my friend hit me up and said, hey, heard you're going to Universal Studios. I'm like, yeah, what's up? He said, hey, the VP of Universal Studios goes to our church. I'm saying, really? He said, hey, I can give you a card, and you can go anywhere you want in the park. I'm like, really? I didn't quite understand how it worked. And so I walked in, and I would show the card. There would be a, a line for a restaurant over an hour long. They opened up my own register. Come on, somebody. I'm like, I'm liking this card. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, we go to every line. And when we go to the line, we first showed up. We showed the card. And they said, oh, Mr. Barber, you're a guest of the VP. And all of a sudden, they would bypass us. We walked by everybody standing in line for over two hours. And when we get off the ride, then we can, they ask us, would you like to go again? And I felt like so bad at first. I'm like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. Like, y'all been waiting over two hours. You, like, you definitely dehydrated. I don't know what's going on with you. And then all of a sudden, but all of a sudden it hit me. I'm like, no, I walk in favor. And I, I ran that ride and all of a sudden I found myself skipping through the lines. <laughs> I'm so sorry, favor isn't fair. Like, like, come on, somebody. How many know you walk in the favor of God? Come on, are you with me? Like any day now is going to be your day. I'll never forget, God put this story in my heart for those of you who maybe have a business or believe in God for something. I'll never forget our, our family ministry. We're believing God to close out strong. Believing God that, that we needed 175000 to come in to fit the vision for what we needed to do. We have three days left in the year. We're playing and believing God. God, you spoke to us clear. Any day now is going to happen. I know you called us to do this. And I'll never forget, my dad's over here on the side. He was with me. We were in the room together. And he said, we got a phone call from an attorney. He said, hey, Mr. Barber, hey, I want to let you know there's this couple. They live in Alaska. They just passed away, but they wrote in their will 15 years ago that when they pass to give two ministries a certain amount of money. And they told us, that, so we're excited to tell you that we're about to wire your ministry $75,000. I was like, what? I'm like celebrating, but in the back of my mind, I'm like, we still need 100 100 k <laughs> Like kind of one of those like half celebrates, you know, like. Then we found out the next day they called. And they said, hey, Mr. Barber, I uh, want to let you know, we called that other ministry, and actually they don't exist anymore, so we're about to wire you another $100,000 to your ministry, and it'll be there by 3 p.m. today. <laughs> Friends, I don't know if you saw it, but 15 years ago, before we even knew that we needed an answer, God's favor was already working on the way. Oh, come on, whole city. I want somebody to realize today, somebody shout, any day now, I'm going to find my favor. How many believe you walk in favor? Come on, give me a shout. How many believe God is moving in your behalf? Do you believe it? God can do it for you. He can do it for you. I'm going to close out today with this. My last thought, you got to understand in faith, when you say any day now, it's not just a statement, but it's the power of your words that carry the weight of heaven. Any day now, when I say that, I know that it carries the faith and the weight of heaven, what I'm declaring and I'm believing God for, because faith declares there's power in your words. It said in scripture that we read in the beginning, Ephesians 6, verse 13 and 18, it says this, be prepared. You're up against far more than you can handle on your own. So take all the help you can get. What does it say? Every weapon that God has issued. What is every weapon? Psalms 107, verse 20 says this. The Bible said, he sent out his word. Everybody shout word. And he healed them, snatching them from the door of death. What healed them? 
What saves you? It's the word. Declaring there is, there is power in your words. The Bible says use every weapon. Well, what is every weapon? Did you know every weapon that God gave you, you use it with your words? And you think, man, I don't need a fight. But the last time I checked, we got an enemy that's got a hit on your life that he says, I came to steal, kill, and destroy, so I better be battle ready. And use every weapon I got when the enemy tries to come to rob my joy and rob my family. And the weapons that God gave you, what is it? Every single one has to do with the words that you declare. God gave you the weapon of prayer. So I'm telling you, you get ready for 21 days of prayer and fasting. Because I believe in Jesus' name, during 21 days of prayer and fasting, I believe your any day miracle is going to be on the way. Come on, anybody believe that? You don't want to miss it. We need to declare. In fact, that might need to be a statement that we share with one another. During 21 days, you texting somebody. Any day now is going to be your day. You calling your friend. Any day now is going to be your day. You posting on their Instagram. Any day now is going to be your day. God gave you the power and the weapon of prayer to pray like Jacob so that you wrestle with God and you will not let go until God brings the answer. He gave you the weapon of worship, to worship with the word, worship like Paul and Silas. You might be in the prison of pain, but your midnight hour, your any day moment is gonna be on the way and every chain will break and every door will come open. God gave you, he gave you the weapon of the word, Gave you the weapon of relationships, speaking life into you. Saying any day now can be your day. But you got to see that there's power in your words, friends. In fact, the Bible says that it's, in Romans, that it's the renewing of your mind that controls your thinking, which whatever controls your thinking is what anchors your faith or your disbelief. Are y'all following me? The Bible does say, take every thought captive that is against the name of the Lord. So literally, like you have a negative thought, you literally take it captive and you replace it with another thought so that you anchor in faith. The doctor may say, you got sickness, you okay, it's okay to hear that, but you say, I'm not going to take that thought captive, I'm going to declare healing and I'm going to set it in my mindset because it anchors my faith at any day now. Are you, are you following me? So there is power in your words that literally renew your mind. I'm going to prove it to you. I want everybody to do this illustration with me. Show of hands, how many believe? I need to know your faith is aligned with me. How many you truly believe? You don't have to raise your hand if you don't. How many believe that there is power in your words and what you declare? Come on, do you believe it? Okay. I'm going to show you and prove it to you. Everybody put the number 10 in your head. When I say go, everybody watch them. Put the number 10 in your head. When I say go, count down silently. When I say shout, I want you to yell out that number that you stopped on. Okay, y'all good? It's, not mul it's multiple choice, so we're good, right? right. When I say go, count down silently from 10. When I say shout, yell out that number you stopped on. Ready, go. Shout. We got some fast counters and some really slow counters. Somebody was like, two. <laughs> lean in, lean in. <clears throat> when you shout out that number, what happened? Your mind stopped counting. Why? Because the words that are coming out of your mouth are so powerful that your mind has to stop to listen to what your mouth has to say because whatever comes out of your mouth controls your mind, it reduces your mind, and it anchors your faith. That's why I declare it's not just a statement for me. It carries the weight of heaven. When I shout any day now, I believe in Jesus' name. Any day now is going to be my day. Do I got anybody in the house that would be willing to stand and give Jesus a shout of praise? Come on. Are you with me? Somebody shout any day now. Any day now is going to be your miracle. Any day now is going to be your strength.
That's why you can look at worry and you can look at anxiety and say, hey, worry and anxiety, you do not have a hold of me anymore. Addiction, you do not have a hold of me anymore. Any day now is going to be my day. Any day now, I'm going to get my joy back. Any day now, my son and my daughter is coming back home. Any day now, my marriage is going to be restored. Any day now is going to be my day. Day. If you believe it, come on, give Jesus a shout of praise. Come on, anybody in the house. Somebody shout, any day now. Do you believe it? There's literally power in your words. You declare healing, you'll see healing. You declare breakthrough, you'll see breakthrough. The, his mercy and his joy is new every morning. You start speaking, your sons and daughters are going to come back. Pray in Jesus' name. Angels, send somebody up in that club and mess them up. Come back home. They're in the middle of sin, but Jesus, show up. Declare it. Believe it. Because any day now is going to be your day. Do you believe it, Hope City? Come on, do you believe it in the house? Do you really believe it's going to be your day? All right. Here's how we're closing right now. The team is going to come and join me. I'm going to ask at every location, if you're watching online, the presence of God can go right from this room, right through the lens of this camera, and settle in your living room, wherever you're watching from. I'm going to ask that we just take this moment. The team is going to actually lift up the pads in this room. What it's going to do is going to usher in the presence of God in this moment. And I want you to take a moment. This is just the way I felt led to my spirit is that at, you're going to feel literally a, just a, a wave of the Holy Spirit begin to move in this place. Just a reverence of God's presence. As they turn it up in the room, I want you to close your eyes and I want you to start giving God everything that you have. Give him your biggest prayer request. Everything that you're believing for. And here's what I want you, I don't want you to stop praying until you believe in your heart that any day now, God's going to do the miracle in your life. Come on, every head bowed and every eye closed. I'm telling you right now, if you need healing in here, this is the moment. If you need to be set free from addiction, this is the moment. In fact, I feel that heavy in my spirit. There's some of you, addiction has creeped up in your life stronger than it ever has. In Jesus' name, in this moment right here, God's going to do a healing. Cancer is no longer of hold of you. I don't know who I'm talking to. In Jesus' name, suicidal thoughts has hit you twice this week. I don't know if it's in the room or watching online, but in Jesus' name, you will find the joy of the Lord right now in this moment more than you'll ever have. Your life has purpose. Your life has meaning. God is for you, not against you. Come on, they're going to crank it up in this room. Lean in to the presence of God. Give him, I already see, I see emotions all through the room. People crying. Come on, give it to him. Trust and believe. Sing it out today. Come on. 
feel the Holy Spirit in the room? It's okay. We can put our hands together. Come on. I see emotions. I see tears. We've got to close out. The, how many feel God moving in your life? Come on, anybody? Just want to create that, that moment of just reverence in God's presence. Guess what? You can do this in your household too. What if you do this every day and you walked out with that every day? Imagine how much joy you would have. But can I tell you, friends, it all starts with the relationship with Jesus. Everything that I'm telling you right now, any day now is going to be your day. It all starts with the relationship with Jesus. Hear my heart in this. Jesus didn't die on the cross to be a part of your top three. He died to be number one in your life. So I'm going to ask with every head bowed and every eye closed in respect for you, but who cares who's to the right or who's to the left of you? This is a statement for you in heaven. And on the count of three, I'm going to ask you to throw your hand up. I'm not trying to get a camera shot. I want you to make a statement with heaven to say, I need you, Jesus. Whether it's the first time you need to ask Jesus into your heart or you need to rededicate your life, this moment is for you. On the count of three, I want you to make a statement for you. Make a statement for your marriage. Make a statement for your family. Come on, at every location, hands are already going up. Ready? One, two, three. Shoot it up and keep it up. Come on, keep it up because I want to see you. Yep, so many hands. Thank you. Proud of you. Proud of you, buddy. We can put our hands together. Come on, keep your hands up if I see you. I want to see your hands. I see you in the back. We love you. Come on, I'm proud of you so much. Come on, I see you. Oh, come on. The Bible says when one comes to heaven, all of heaven throws a party. I think we need to throw a party with heaven and join on that. I see you, buddy. I'm proud of you. Come on, I see you, bud. Proud of you, bud. That's what it's all about. Come on, everybody shout this prayer with me. Everybody shout, Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for me. Thank you for shedding your blood for me. Today, Jesus, I give you my life. Come into my heart. In Jesus' name. Hey, everybody, throw your hands up. I want to pray over you. And Pastor Tyler is going to come and close this out. But I want to pray in declaration together that your any day moment is on the way. Father, I thank you for every single person that's in the room, every location, everybody watching online. Holy Spirit, right now, you know every detail of their story. That moment we just had together, they gave it to you, Lord. And I pray right now in Jesus' name as a family that we're going to leave here today stronger and greater. The joy that they've been looking for happens today. The hope that they've been looking for, God, this happens today. Father, in Jesus' name, their marriage will come back together. Their relationships will come back together, Lord God. Anxiety is no more. Depression is no more. They are going to walk out here full of faith that any day now is going to be their day, God. And Father, we declare it and we believe it together as a church family. And in advance, we give you all the glory and we give you all the honor. One more time, Hope City. I know we've been shouting a lot, but come on, give Jesus all the glory. Come on, give him all the honor. In Jesus' name.